Hey guys, how's it going? So last time we went ahead and talked about one of the measures of spread um, that we're going to be talking about in this class, and that was the standard deviation, and that corresponded to the mean. But we also have another measure of spread that corresponds to when we're talking about the median. Um, but before we dive into that elusive interquartile range, let's go ahead and start talking about uh, some of the smaller subcomponents of that in order to get, to get a better picture of the overall measure of spread. So first things first, let's start off with our quartile. So just as the name states, quartiles break up data into quarters or 25% based on concepts of median. So kind of using the same idea of a median, we break up data into not half, but now into fourths. So the median splits up data in half, aka you have 50% above and 50% below. So there's our little median in our data set of 11, right? So out of 1 through 11, our median is going to be that 6. And we, go, we can go ahead and figure it out. We already know how to do um, that for the measure of central tendency. So now we have 50% of the data above, 50% of the data below, and that's the median. Now the quartile ends up splitting those two halves, those two 50% into half again. And so it splits the, the numbers above and below the median in half again. So our Q1 in this case is the first quartile, and that is 3. Technically, our second quartile is the median, but it has its own title median, so we don't worry about that. And then the third quartile is Q3. Now quartiles, they basically break up these data into 25%, right? So essentially, from the first data point to Q1, we should have 25%. From Q1 to our median, we should have 25% of our data. From the median to Q3, we should also have 25%, and you guessed it. <laughs> From Q3 to the last data point, we have 25%. So technically, Q1 is kind of like a 25th percentile. Right, because 25% of the data lies below that. The median is kind of like the 50th percentile. And then what would you guess is the percentile for Q3? Exactly. It's going to be 75%, right? Because it's three quarters of the data. And that's basically all conceptually um, I could talk about in terms of quartiles. So it's just kind of to practice getting them. But remember one thing is that when we're talking about medians or anything corresponding to medians, we want to make sure that the data is placed in numerical order and again, just this is referring to low to high. And so determine the Q1 and Q3 for the following data set. In order for us to get Q1 and Q3, we first off, we have to break up our data in half, right? So once we break it in half, then we can break those corresponding halves in half again. <laughs> um, so let's go ahead and get our median. How do we get our median? Our median is, remember, observation n plus 1 over 2. How many observations do we have? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So 7 plus 1 over 2, remember that goes in parentheses, that's 8 over 2 aka 4. So it's the fourth observation in our data set. Yay. So the median is 27, right? No. Remember that we have to put our, our um, I'm sorry, our data in order. So let's go ahead and do that first. And that was just to make sure you guys are paying attention, right? So always number one step when you're doing the meeting, you have to make sure your data is in order. So let's start off with two, next is four, five, 10, 12, 18, and 27. Now the fourth observation is the median. So not 27, but 10 rather. So the median is 10, and so now we split up our data into 50%, right? So from 27, and not including 27, right? Because 27 is that cutoff. So we have three observations to the left, three observations to the right, and so how do we find the midpoint of those two? It's literally just the middle. So Q1 4 and Q2, I mean, I'm sorry, Q3 is 18. That's about it. Groovy. Who says that?
I do. Uh, so let's go ahead and move on to the next one. The next one's a little more difficult because the observations aren't as easily broken down, I guess. So determine Q1 and Q3 again. So what's our first step? So we don't make our mistake again, put it in order. But actually the good thing is that this data is already in order. So less work for us. Now, let's get our median. The median corresponds to n plus one over two again, right? So how many observations do we have? We have four, five, six, seven, ocho, eight. So we have eight total observations. So that's eight plus one in parentheses to give us nine. Divide that by two, and so we end up with 4.5. So it's the four and a half observation, for lack of a better word. So it's somewhere right here in the middle. How do we get the median if there's two numbers? We've seen this before. So it should be nothing new. So the median we can get by getting an average, right? So 610 plus 650, divide that by how many observations do we have? Just two, right? Because we're just talking about those two numbers, 610 and 650. So our median is then 630. And we're good. So we got our median. So now our data is split in half, but this time it doesn't include those numbers in the middle, right? So it's not that 610 and 650 are the median. There's something in the middle between those two that's the median. So we're not we're not failing to include 610 and 650 now in terms of the data on the left and the data on the right. So the data on the left includes 520, 570, 600, and 610. So we have four numbers on the left. Same thing on the right. Four, the same four numbers on the right. We have 650, 670, 690, and 730. So how do we get the media, the midpoint of those two? It's right in the middle, which would be great if it was odd, right? Because odd, if there's only three, just like the one we saw before, three and three, you pick the one in the middle. I'm not going to put my fingers down, though, because it's going to be inappropriate. <laughs> so four on the left, the midpoint. Q1 is then going to be what? How do we get Q1? Nice. Q1 is just the average, right, of those two numbers. So 570 plus 600 over 2. And we make sure we put that in parentheses, right? So Q1 ends up being 585. Now let's get Q3. Q3 is just the same thing on the opposite end. We're in between two numbers, just like we were on the left side. So let's go ahead and average these two. 670 plus 690 over 2. Over 2. So Q3 is 680. Good. So that's about it. And I want to go ahead and just reinforce that the quartiles break down everything into percentages. So if we were to ever find percentiles, for example, the 75th percentile would be which one? It's just the third quarter, right? The third quarter up. So just to recap that, the, 50th, the 25th percentile is 585, the 50th percentile is 630, and the 75th is 680. That's about it. So quartiles, we got that down. Next, we're going to talk about interquartile range um, and see what that tells us. So thanks for joining, and we'll see you for the next video. Take care.